You just lost a trade and thinking, why am I not becoming a better trader? Because you spend countless of hours on the charts day in and day out, consistently showing up, drilling everything down and not seeing any results. So why is this? Well, I know how you're feeling as I've experienced it myself in my trading journey and I have three steps which will probably help you transform your trading and see that nice upward curve again in your progress. Now all of these steps are bonded together, so it's important that you understand all three, starting with this first one. One of the reasons why you may not be improving your trading is because of identifying the trading conditions. And you guys may already know this on a normal level, but if you really want to improve, you have to take it up to the next level, which I can help you with. There's five key principles which you have to follow to identify the best trading conditions. First is news, and that is pretty easy to follow. You just go in on forexfactory.com and find out what types of news that is on that day. When there is high impact news drivers, we can expect the market to be volatile on that day. But that doesn't mean we can trade on non high impact news days. We just have to keep in mind that the market might not be as volatile as we thought. If you were to compare non-high impact news days to high impact news days, we will look at this chart example right here. And as we can see, we have two AM sessions. One does have high impact news drivers and the other doesn't. The one which do have high impact news drivers is the one on Wednesday. As we can see, price was extremely volatile and expanded with a fast pace. Compared to the one which didn't have high impact news drivers, it kind of just consolidated and wasn't really expanding as much as the one which did have high impact news drivers. Next up is the kill zones, where we primarily want to focus on the New York AM session as that's where the best trading conditions are offered. But within these kill zones, there are certain time zones which we want to avoid trading such as the 8.30 high impact news, 9.30, and sometimes even the 10 a.m. Because this is where price movement can become unpredictable, but sometimes if you have a good draw on liquidity and price is offering trade opportunities, you can take a trade entry within this period. But I just like to stay away within five minutes of these time zones. If we were to look at a chart example of these specific time zones where we mostly want to avoid trading, it will look something like this. So first of all, we can see on this day we had high impact news drivers. So that means at 8.30 we could expect price to be extremely volatile. And that's where I want to avoid trading within the 8.30 to 8.35 time period. As we can see from this period, price was extremely unpredictable we couldn't really anticipate where price wants to go it was just waking around going back and forth within price action so if we move over to 930 to 935 this is a bit better and we could expect price to be a bit more predictable at this point so we can see that between 830 and 835 price did actually offer some trade opportunities such as a inversion for wealthy gap trade entry so 930 to 935, it is all right to be trading within this time period, but it could also be extremely volatile, such as the 830. Now, if we move down to the 10 to 1005, we can see this is a bit more predictable. And within the 10 a.m. to 1005, that's usually where we see the reversal happen within price action or within the AM session. And we can also see that for this day, price basically just reversed after the 10 a.m time zone. So we can see this is a bit more predictable. Price is offering a bit more trade entries within this period, such as such as a order block. So that's mainly what we're going to focus on within these time zones. So to summarize, price action basically becomes more predictable from each time zone to move forward. As we can see, 830 to 835 is extremely unpredictable, but then if we move over to 930 to 935, it becomes better. And with the right drawn liquidity, such as this data high right here, it becomes easier to predict. And if we look at the 10 to 10.05, price isn't expanding as much as these two other time periods or price isn't as volatile and price action becomes a bit more predictable. When it comes to taking trade entries, we want to prioritize the macros, which occurs around 8.50 to 9.10, then 9.50 to 10.10, and lastly 10.50 to 11.10 within the AM session. So these are the time zones we primarily want to be trained within, as they offer algorithmic signatures and clean price movement. If we were to look at the 8.50 to 9.10 macro, we can see the price action isn't really the best and we aren't seeing those clean algorithmic signatures. So why is this? Well, it's mainly because we usually see expansion after 9.30 to 9.35. So before 9.30 to 9.35, we aren't really seeing the best price action or that's what I've been experiencing these past weeks. 
Now, if we move down to the 950 to 1010 macro, as that's where we mostly see the best trade entries be offered, in my opinion, we can see right at the start, price came down, swept sell side liquidity, then price created an inversion for volley gap, utilized that inversion for volley gap to create an order block right at the start of the 10 to 10 5 time period where price created the same reversal based on using this order block to move higher then the rest of the 950 to 10 10 macro price started to expand off that 10 a.m reversal so this was pretty clean price action we saw some good trade opportunities and some clean algorithmic signatures if we were to move over to the 1050 to 1110 we can see the price action was also decent. It wasn't really like the 850 to 910 macro. It was a bit better, but it's not better than the 950 to 1010 macro, in my opinion. As we can see, price created right at the start of the macro a Favaldi gap, utilized that Favaldi gap to then push price lower, came all the way down, swept sell side liquidity, and then slowly started to move higher again at the end of the AM session. So this was some pretty clean macro zones as we can see right here. It also aligned with those time periods. So if we narrow it down, I've made a timeline where you want to trade. And we can see between 8.30 and 8.35, this is where I mostly avoid trading during this time period because price action is unpredictable and we can't really most of the time anticipate where price wants to go. And then 8.35 to 9.25, this price action i rather want to avoid trading but it can of course be traded but i would just wait for the 935 to 1010 and if we move over to the 925 to 935 we can see that this time period i mostly avoid trading same reason as 930 to 935 because price action is really unpredictable and we're going to see some extremely volatile move but i do know some people who are actually very profitable trading within this period but it's just really up to you and what you want to be trading and then the 935 to 1010 this is my favorite time period to be trading within as we see a lot of algorithmic signatures clean price movement and price is really just drawing towards the important drawn liquidities that we are seeking then the 1010 to 1050 this is a bit better than the 855 to 925 but i would just rather want to wait for the 1050 to 1110 time period and this is also a very nice macro where we see a lot of algorithmic signatures and price movement moving forward to the second step we're going to look at the risk management and this is a subject which most traders avoid because it can be boring but it is essential if you actually want to become a better trader so if we were to break down risk management up into two parts it would be risk reward ratio and the amount of money you risk per trade starting with the risk reward ratio which is basically the amount of risk compared to the amount of reward you have within a trade and there is a tool within tradingview.com which can tell you this automatically so you don't have to use a calculator every time but before i show you how we need to know what a good risk reward ratio is now the average risk reward ratio is around 1r which isn't really good as then you have to have at least over 50% win rate to become a profitable trader. And of course, this is possible, but I just like to go within a 1 to 2 risk reward ratio, as then you can lose two trades in a row and win one to become break even. And this is pretty good if you ask me. But how do we use this tool? Let's say that I wanted to take this inversion to the gap trade entry right here. Then I will use the tool called long position on trading view, tap on the entry point, put my stop loss where I think price would disrespect the trade. So let's just say right here and then take profit where I want to take the profit of the trade. So now we have marked out our trade, but how do we know the risk reward ratio? Well, if you put your cursor over the long tool, you can see something called risk reward ratio. And then you can see it says 2.36 risk reward ratio. So that is our risk reward ratio. And we can see this is pretty good a two risk reward ratio which is what we wanted so this trade entry is a very good one next up is the money risk and that is pretty straightforward now let's say that you take a one to two risk reward ratio trade where you risk 100 dollars and you lose it but the next trade you risk 10 dollars in a one to two risk reward ratio and you win it but you're still down 80 dollars as you only risk 10 dollars on one trade and 100 dollars on the other trade but this isn't quite wrong. So let's say that you just got a brand new account and you risk again $100 where you lose. 
then it is actually a good idea to cut the risk in half until your break even when you can go back up to risking $100 again. Because then if you lose the second trade, you will be less within the drawdown. But if you are a more advanced trader, you can maybe cut the risk in half when you lose two trades in a row. This also counts for winning, because when we have a winning streak, we often get too comfortable and think we can't lose. But we all know losing is a part of the game, meaning cutting the risk in half after a good winning streak might be ideal, because then you will be in a lesser of a drawdown when you actually start losing again. The last step is being patient. And of course, this is very easy, right? You just don't press buy all the time. But that is where most people get it wrong. Patience can be within a lot of factors in trading, which I will break down. Now, there's three main areas where patience is needed. First is execution, second is conditions, and third is consistent risk. Starting with execution, which is probably the most important one, as that's where money is lost and made. Here we have to focus on waiting for the right setup, but also not hesitating. And it takes time to fully be in that harmony, especially if you have experienced overtrading or too much trading hesitation in the past. And I just want to tell you that you can actually do this. It takes time, which most things does, but you're going to be so happy when you finally found the perfect spot for you. Something that might help you would be tracking a paper trading account and seeing how often your trade setups are offered. And I don't mean like a low probability to trade, which is on a non-trading day. I mean those A plus trades, which you have wished you have taken, and these might not be offered every day or once a week. But when you have gotten that track record of how often your trades are showing up, then you know what your expectations should be and when you should trade. Next is conditions, which I think are already pretty much covered in the last step, so we're just going to jump straight over to the consistent risk, which is basically risking the same amount per trade, but also cutting the risk in half when you lose a trade or two, and also when you're on a winning streak, as I talked about within the second step. Thank you so much guys for watching this video, and I really hope you're going to see some more improvement in the future by following these specific steps. But if you want to become a better trader, a trading strategy is recommended, and if you don't have one, I've already made it easy guide on how to build one which you can watch right here.